Welcome to another episode of the Underground Bunker podcast. We have a very special episode this week. You may have read recently my piece about the daycare from hell, that thing we've been talking about for years that happened with Scientology parents who were convinced not to press charges. And I centered that story about around a woman I called Ellen, who was the one brave parent who did want to press charges. And with uh, that story coming up again recently, Ellen decided to come forward. And that is Trish Conley. And she decided to join me this week along with her sister, Liz Conley. And I want to thank the two of you so much for uh, joining me on the podcast this week. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> thanks to you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> We really, we really, really appreciate it. It's helped us a lot so far. Yeah. Yeah. So Trish, uh, Trish goes by her uh, married name, Walker, but you're both the Conley sisters and yep. Trish is in California and Liz is in Australia. And thankfully yep. with the internet, we're all able to get on together at the same time and talk. <laughs> and uh, oh boy, a lot of stuff came up. I mean, you know, the, the, the reason why the daycare from hell story came up again was that uh, uh, Leah Remini and Yashar Ali published a photo of Ju uh, Julian Schwartz, mm -hmm. this notorious enforcer for Scientology, who was the guy all those years ago went around convincing these parents not to press charges. He was also mentioned during Danny Masterson's trial. His photo was shown. That photo was made public. And so Leah mentioned the daycare from hell story. And that's why I brought it up. And so uh, Trish had some updates for me, but really... This gave us an opportunity to talk about your whole story, which is just amazing. The two of you have been through so much with your parents and your cousin and all of this. And I knew Underground Bunker readers would love to hear you talk about it. And, and, and it's very brave of you to come on and talk about it publicly. I know there's a lot uh, that you've mm -hmm. been through. Um, I, there was a photograph I published of the two of you and you were very young. Uh, I think, Trish, you were maybe nine. You were joining the Sea Org. Liz, you were mm -hmm. a couple of years older. Can you tell me about the family at that point? That's a picture of all of you, your parents, your brother, and the two of you out in front of Big Blue would mm -hmm. have been what? Uh, early 90s or something like that? 80s, 80s. No, it was that 80. Yeah. I was... Uh... 15 and I think yeah Trish was nine and I'll tell you we so we were okay where do I start we were living our life um in a suburban Melbourne home we were pr quite a traditional family Scientology was part of our life as uh, public and then um, well we're third generation technically because yeah, our, our grandparents, grandparents worked with we're at, we're at St. Hill with Hubbard. Wow. Um, back in, you know, when Dianetics it, came out, they took a boat and were really interested in it. And, uh, you know, we're there with him. So, yeah, we grew up with Scientology. Mm. So yeah. I'll try. So basically, our dad, I'll just give you some context. So um, Jim Conley is my stepdad. So Trish and I, uh, we have the same mother, different father. Okay. But he came he came into our lives when I was five. So he got into Scientology because of our mother, whose parents were Scientologists. So it kind of came down. Um, our Jim got very, very, very into Scientology. He, he had previously been at Vietnam and it really affected him. He was, you know, a drinker smoking pot and everything and then basically in that time period when we were just in school and living our life he had a great job and then he got very much into <laughs> studying and being at the church in Melbourne came home one day and said we were having dinner Trish we're going to doesn't... Disneyland <laughs> no hold on <laughs> Trish probably doesn't remember this as much as I do because I was mm. 14 or 15 yeah he said I have made a decision that um we're moving to Los Angeles and I am joining the Sea Org. We kind of knew what it was, of course. The Sea Org is the one where you really, you know. So he basically said, we're going to go, we'll go on a holiday, we'll go to LA, see what it's like, you know, we'll go via Hawaii and all this sort of stuff. So he made Wait, out. Wait, I thought like we it. went to Florida first to flag, not no, LA. We went, 
No, we yeah, you tell it, you tell it. We did a bit of both. Anyway, so the upshot is we were there, we took that photo, um, and then it was like happy families. We didn't really know what was happening, but that's when everything fell apart. I went back to Australia. Trish was nine or ten, had nowhere to live, had to join the cadet org. And from then on, she really never had a home ever never. after that. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, and they, they said the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics. And our mother didn't actually want to join the Sea Org either. She actually left, came back to Melbourne, and then sometime later went back to LA and joined. So the whole thing, it was all about him is what I'm trying well, to say. Yeah. It was but, his flow. Yeah. Yeah, but I was in a dorm in the beginning with a bunch of other kids at that age, you know, put on the EPF trying to, you know, without even finishing, you know, not, not even in high school yet reading these EPF things and whatnot. Um, and somehow managed to get through it. I don't know how, honestly, I just don't know how. And then well, you, you know you, you, get... gutsy. you were a very gutsy kid, always very ballsy, <laughs> gutsy. And I think you just were a survivor, you know. Mm -hmm. just survived, but didn't thrive, you know. It's like I no. think it's affected, it's impacted her always to be nine. Yeah. Right. Right. Pulled away yeah. from your family life. I was a bit older, I was 15 and I was pretty sophisticated and grown up at 15. Trish just had no chance, you know. Yeah, because I raised myself. Like I was raised as a wild kid or running around packed base. And yep. um, you know, yeah, no, no guidance, no parents, no And then at some that. point and then, then some point your mother got in trouble and was yeah. put on the RPF. Do you remember what it <clears throat> yeah. possibly was that she got in trouble for? I don't remember. Was, I no, I'll, she, I'll tell no, uh uh, let me tell. <laughs> <laughs> Dad I remember this very vividly. Dad came and looked really serious. And we were at the CMO PPRO wing at the blue building. And he said, you know, you got to come sit in here and uh, I've got something to tell you. And, um, you know, mom has blown. It's very serious because she's going to be declared an SP if she doesn't come back. And then, you know, we, none of us will be able to speak to her. So it's really important that we get her back. And she has two weeks before she gets declared. So she ended up coming back because she didn't want to be declared and was put on the RPF. And I think I was about 12 by that time. It's a little foggy, but um, mm. at the time the RPF were living in the parking garage across the street from the blue building. We had cots and mattresses on floors, just like rats basically. And I just wanted to be with my mom. So I was like, well, I want to go there too. And I was already a brat because I'm running around. Just, what else? You know, you know, not fully committed to being a SEERG member because I wouldn't have joined on my own volition, you know? So yeah, Ooh. I ended up sleeping in the in the parking garage with her and um, wearing, you know, have to wear blue and you have to wear like an armband and you have to run everywhere you go and you're not allowed to say hello to anybody. And yeah, I remember, you... I remember seeing Tony, I remember seeing them running around and I'd just be looking at them and they'd wave at me and not allowed to talk to them. Literally mm -hmm. not allowed to say, and mom, you know, she's demoralized. Mm. She, she, she uh, just terrible. So, and I think she was, there for a year or something right it was a long time so we were both there for a very long time and we didn't even finish because um like that was the other thing but this is a story for another time because in this in the rpf you have to audit people and like i'm a 12 year old girl learning how to audit my twin who's a grown man like actually i was on the rpf with matt pesh believe it or not oh wow <laughs> you, yeah and i was there the day he cut off his thumb i don't know if you've ever heard that story wow it was awful we rushed him to anyway another time but hi matt if you're watching i remember oh. that very clearly and um um it was the portland crusade and they needed all hands on deck and everybody with a 
whatever had to show up in Portland. I, I didn't know why or what was happening. It was just like, oh, here we go. I know what it was for now, but it's, I didn't really know yeah, what it was at the time. For the, yeah, yeah. Court, yeah. Um, what, was what was his name? Yeah. Do you know Tony? Tony uh, it was for the woman, um, Titchborn yeah. Christofferson. What was her first name? I'm, I'm blanking. No, no, no. no. There, was, there was another one with the last name started with W. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the eighties, anyway. he was also the well, LA Warsheim crusade. Warsheim was in LA. That's though. him. Warsheim yeah, but, was in LA. Yeah. The the Portland one was the woman. Yes. Oh, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. I feel like those were close together. Though. You, they were. Yeah. They were at the same marching, time. They were, we were both marching, in the mid eighties. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just remember marching around and sleeping in parks, and <laughs> you know, that yeah, was weird. Anyway, the funny thing, Tony, is that. In some ways, and this is where it became a little bit intoxicating, is you do think we are a part of something incredibly different and special and mm -hmm. no one else knows what we're doing and we're like, like this. You, you actually feel empowered. Mm -hmm. Well, that's I what I was, that's I, what I was going to ask. I you. went through times just being a public Scientologist of feeling like I'm in this cool group. There's all these people from everywhere and you know, only we know this situation, right, right. you know. Well, that's what, I was, that's what I was going to ask you is that, okay, the grandparents, L. Ron Hubbard comes through town. He's got this wild tale. Hey, let's go yeah. to England. You could sort of see it just sort of being an adventure and kind of fun. But, but then by the time it gets to your dad, he's literally willing to break apart his family and yeah. give up his daughter's what was it that sunk so deep into him that Scientology became his whole world, even till today? That's what you're struggling with. On, I honestly, think, Tony, I, I wish I knew. What I do, is that, Liz? I, do. I So I was five. I remember very clearly when he came into our life. Uh, he, Our mother was, my mom, was 30. He was 21. And... Uh, he had a very dysfunctional family, very aggressive, controlling family. He was an alcoholic but, and violent. You know, I mean, that's the truth. I observed But he it. also I watched it. Got out of Vietnam, so. I mean, yeah, sure just come back from times. Vietnam. Like, literally, he was 21. Yeah. Just yeah. come back. And he was, yeah. you know, he I think he was still in war mode a lot mm -hmm. of the He wasn't violent, like... Um, he was just angry to his guns and knives and angry, so angry and drinking and whatever. And I think that for him as an individual, it, it did something for him that he stopped drinking and, you know, he found that fixed him. And then he was on a crusade. That was it. Just, this is the thing for everybody. And I'm going to save my family. And I'm going to save the planet. And yeah, yeah, that was yeah. it. Would say I'm going to save the planet. I'm going, yeah. and that's it. And he actually did say, "You can come or not come. I'm going." Mm -hmm. I'm not joking. He said those words. Yeah. So up to this point, uh, so that we're talking mid '80s, uh, the Crusade, it, the RPF. Yeah. Let me just interrupt and say, can you give me some sense of your relationship with your cousin at this point? I can. Kate and I grew up together, same age. We're very, 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 very close. Uh, she very successful at the age from the age of 17. Six, I was six, yeah, and she was in singing in bands and she was on TV or like on a um like Star Search. An American yeah. Idol type thing. She won the Australian version of what it was back in the 80s. And she um, very always that family, so very much into Scientology. So the cousins and the auntie, mum, sister, very much. We were we would all like school holidays, we would go into the church and hang the out. Courses, and yeah. Do the community I was doing the communications course with my cousin when we were 11, 12, you know. So that was our school holidays. We didn't go away we would go there. So and how does how does she pronounce what? her last name? Severano. Severano. And how Severano. to Australians? Yeah. She's pretty well known, right? She's yeah. a household name. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Uh, she 
um, is like a celebrity singer, TV host, you know, like she just literally everybody knows who she is. If, if you went up to anyone in a supermarket and said, do you know who Kate Severano is? They would say yes. Whether they have just heard about her, she's very much everywhere. She always performs. She's, yeah, very famous. And yeah. then, Trish, you had told me that your mother really had, was tight with her or was just really regarded her highly. She's obsessed with Kate. I'm sorry. I don't want to knock on my mom, but she loves yeah. Kate. Yeah. And that's all I want to say about that right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I but I was very close with Kate. Like, I had a real thing. We grew up together, literally. I think we're seven months apart. Um I have always, my relationship with her has always continued regardless of any of my sister being declared a suppressive person. Kate and I always kept in touch. She always wanted to know how is Trish, you know, like she has a really beautiful heart. Oh, yeah, she does. She's, she's, a, she's, she's a beautiful person. Like mm -hmm. we really, I can't really fault her except to say that I feel that um, she also has, she's, I don't know what to say. It's kind of like, she's just lot, not lost. I don't know what to say, but I just think I find it hard to talk to her now in current time, since my sister and I wrote a letter to our parents, us disconnecting from them because we don't want to play happy families anymore. It's too difficult and and so since then, now Kate won't talk to me, of course, because mm. it's gone. I've made my line. Like I was a little bit always, well, I'll speak to both sides, all sides, you know, because I'm not declared. And, you know, like I'm sure you've interviewed many people who are sometimes they're still in the middle. And then I sort of chose to go that way. And so now there's no contact. And, you know, she's literally performing around the corner from me, I think tomorrow. Wow. In, at, a, at doing a concert. And I, I mean, it doesn't bother me, actually. It doesn't bother yeah. me. I love what we used to have. I worked with her for many years. I was her assistant. I went on the road with her. We traveled oh, the wow. world. We lived in New York together, recording an album. So, you know, a very, very, very tight in answer to your original question. So, yeah. Uh, and so can I just say that, I think, um, you know, we were a very tight family. The Conleys, the Sopranos, we were very, very tight. And there were, well, you asked the question, we were, there was a break because my dad and my mom and I were off in the Sea Org in LA. Liz sort of went back to Australia, you know, here and there, back and forth. Back and forth. Um, but, you know, at, we weren't close sort of after that until um i don't know at but, some point do you i don't there was something that happened in the sea org where david miscavige or somebody came down and said you can't have children anymore in the sea org and mm, so you mm. have to you have to decide what you want to do you have to either mm. leave leave yep. with them raise them mm. and then come back when they're 18 yes. or something um mm -hmm. or send them away to a relative or they have to join uh I don't I don't know what the cadet org it was fully, it was something bizarre and I don't even I, think I, I remember I don't think there was an option for you no. to go and join they oh, decided I, she no, got she I, went I, to Australia well, what was no, your situation Trish no because I begged them to go I was like come on let's go let's go home let's go back to Australia let's put the family back together, whatever. And it was just a hard no. And so I ended up going back to Australia and living with Kate and Cherie and my grandmother at the time. And um, my parents stayed in LA and we're in the Sea Org. Yep. Um, so I don't know. It's, you know. It's so much wreckage. It's, it is it's so much wreckage. Thing, right? It's such Tony. destruction well i asked you about <laughs> australia's biggest celebrity now let me ask you about her other celebrity trish how did you get to know leah <laughs> leah and i um were sort of in the similar circle we used to actually work at survival insurance together 
<laughs> we were one of those LA brats running around and she was starting her acting career at that point. And, um, mm. and then when, you, you know, we kind of in and out of each other's lives a little bit here. And then we also have a mutual friend that I don't know if Leah wants me to mention her name, but, um, w uh, when I was doing my OT levels, we were both on them at the same time. And so mm -hmm. I would, I came out of like the OT three course room and Leah's going in and she's like, so what, what's happening? And I'm like, uh, -uh I can't say. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> so so yeah, that's how I know Leah. And, and I remember Leah, um, just as a, I was in the, the different age gap. So I was hanging out with a certain clique of Scientology kids. And then Trish was hanging out with her little clique. And I remember Leah, start, like she was like this feisty she, girl. So feisty. Like, she hasn't changed. Just like, <laughs> no, her personality is the same. Is, is the same. <laughs> That's why, I, I, you know, like people might say, oh, she's, too over the top or she's too like up in arms about everything but she was always like that always that was her yeah. absolute go-to personality she's so brilliant good, good for her you know yeah. good for brave. her really she's so brave so yeah. brave yeah so then um tell me about um did you ever join okay you were in the cadet org but then did you ever graduate to the c org itself so i was on the cmo epf uh, and that's when I was like learning how to clean rooms and iron shirts. Uh, and I actually got, remember cleaning Dave and Shelly's um, room and ironing. I remember ironing, you know, I'm, I'm nine or 10 years old or something, you know, and I'm ironing. Um, I don't know why this pops in every time I think about it, but I was ironing a silk shirt for Shelly and I'd never ironed in my life. And I put a burn on it now and everyone was <laughs> freaking out. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Like, I don't know how to iron. <laughs> so it's like, you know, go do the ironing course or whatever. Um, and then I look up your misunderstood words on ironing. <laughs> I was sort of, I don't know. I was, it's such a, a crazy time, the early days. But when I went back to Australia with, to live with Kate and I was like trying to go to school, uh, I ended up living in a halfway house. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, because they kicked, they kicked me out for being a brat or something. And, um, I probably was a brat. Um, I'll take ownership of that, but whatever. And then my parents came back and they were in the Sea Org in Sydney and they were like, come up here and be in the Sea Org with us. And I was like, no, I don't want to, like, I've never wanted to be in the Sea Org. I've never wanted to even like really be in Scientology. It's just, we were raised like this. So, um, uh, I w and my, I remember my, I, my grandmother put me on a bus, uh, to go see them. And it was a whole recruitment cycle. And I would, I'd left from the RPF. So that was the time they were like, no kids. And I was like, I'm on the RPF. There's no way I'm going to be joining the Sea Org and go back on the RPF up here in Australia. And they're like, don't worry, we'll handle that. And they waived that. And they, all the considerations and I'm like well now what do I do I'm 15 or 16 at this point and ended up you know the pressure's on and so I joined and so though I was on staff there at AOSA Janzo for a very long time feels like and then but I was always trying um, to leave <laughs> always just two, trying to like two or three. you were you were always oh, oh my gosh yeah yeah Oh, so bring, just so bring us up to, we need to get okay. to the daycare. Mm. Uh, tell me about uh, becoming a mom and everything. Oh, it's the greatest joy of my life. She is the the most mm. important person in my universe. She is everything. Um, so you were in LA at that point? And yeah, I was in LA and I was on my OT levels, I believe. Or maybe I just finished OT4. And Madison was like three or four young and we'd send her to a daycare so I could like audit or whatever. Um, and you know, that's when that whole situation came about, but I didn't know about it at the time. So years <laughs> went by and I know you can cut in one sec. And I got a call. Mm -hmm. I was bringing Madison back from SeaWorld. She and I had taken her to SeaWorld and it's Julian. And he says, um, listen, I don't want you to be alarmed, but 
um, there's going to be a detective Schiffner who's going to call you because something's happened. I want you to come straight to the org and uh, I've got to talk to you about it. And, um, I, and he's like, I can't tell you over the phone. So get here. And that's when Liz, I had to take Madison home, obviously first. And I'm calling Liz, like something's happened, like something's happened. And then Liz and I went into the org. So you were in LA at that time, Liz? I yeah. was, yeah. So I I have literally lived half my life in LA there and then Australia, but mostly LA. So yes, but, I was, I was living around the corner from Trish. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when I got to Julian, he explained that these, who's the daycare uh, person, her son had been molesting these babies, basically. It's really sick. And uh, I don't want to cry. It just, um, but the how they found out about it was mm. that Bridget was trying to get on her OTLage and it came up in a sec check. And Julian told me that he was the one who reported it to the police. And I thought, wow, that's cool right like that's cool i'm stoked what i didn't realize was that um i think he knew i didn't really get this until later but nobody's gonna sue or you know liz and i were pulled into the chaplain like you know we can't put this kid in jail he's gonna get psych drugs like you know um we're going to handle it internally. Like, don't. And I was like, no, I'm going to talk to Detective Schiffner. I'm going to the DA. I'm going to call all the mothers. And this, you know, such and such, so and so is going down. You know, people like that don't change. Mm. And, and the mom, the mom was sitting there. I remember the mom was sitting there. Oh, yeah. Just like begging, ple looking at pleading with us, like her mm -hmm. whole body language was just it was the it was awful in this tiny room mm -hmm. and oh, it, it was, was awful. I still shake when I think about I it. I know, I know. Yeah. Um and I think that's we both we both walked out that day. I wasn't really into Scientology at that time, not I and well was that like, was I've, the end for me. Well I've lost what, actually what was the end for me, Liz, was so oh, yeah. when I when I spoke to Detective Schiffner and I I took notes I was recording everything at the time and um he was like I was like who are the other mothers because and he's like I can't say because they're minors and da 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 and I was like I'm gonna list off a bunch of names because the detective was like I can't do anything with one baby you know so he's like I'll lift off I'll I'll lift off names list off names and you don't say anything if I get it right so mm. he's like so and so so and so so and so and I'm like ah oh, okay okay so I call all the moms and I'm like we have to go and get this guy put away and they're like oh no he's already come and done um lower conditions and liability formulas and he's baby made up the damage by babysitting for us I'm like are you mad are you mental <laughs> that's insane and that's well, they, when i was like that's it i'm out of here i mean that was one of the reasons <laughs> yeah just crazy crazy absolutely what do you remember liz you remember it differently <laughs> oh she's frozen we're having a little technical difficulty. hemispheric issue here my um, my um rage got the best of us <laughs> well what and you were you were yeah, tight with yeah. leah at the time she she what and, you were her reaction um, tell her about it? so i left in yeah. i was i was out in probably 2005 really it's, under the radar being very like it caused oh hang on liz you're frozen right no, I, 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 no. can you hear her tony a little yeah um um no, i remember all of that you're I, you're frozen liz i think i was pretty i was pretty 
busy working. Oops. Oops. We lost her. Okay. We'll see if she well, can get back on in a second. Yeah. Um, um so ha I was uh, under the radar in 2005 just I'd finished OT4 and I that had happened and then these or maybe it was 2000 and yeah I was sort of under the radar but then in 2007 those basics came out and I just was like this is a scam a scam and I had just bought the books like a week before it's like I was like cool here take these back and um give me the new set like no no you got to buy them again mm -mm. um uh, there you are hey, Liz. hi i'm far away <laughs> uh, tell us again ahead, you were going to tell us what, yeah. what that uh, experience was like for you yeah oh yeah it was awful because i saw trish you know crumbling i was very busy working i had a pretty big career and stuff so i was working but and i don't remember her calling all of the daycare people but i do remember the detective being at the house and i remember it was and it was just um surreal it was so surreal and he was lovely like he was lovely. really I, really? I called him a few years like, ago and he remembered I liked him a lot. I remembered my name. He was I so mean, respect so respectful so and really wanted to do the right thing. And he was, yeah, we wanted mm -hmm. to support him. Mm -hmm. I wonder where he is now. He was amazing. Did yeah. uh do you remember your parents having any kind of reaction? Did they know about it at all? No. We weren't it's like you don't put anything on their lines, you know. Oh, you yeah. don't that's that's no in theta on yeah. Sea Org members' and, lines, and, or you go to ethics. And this goes back to uh, you know, we didn't see them very often. They would come, they didn't have a home, they had an, a room in the blue building. And so the only times they could ever see us uh was on Sunday mornings when they had time to do their laundry. That's when they get off to do their laundry. So they would come to Trisha's house and do their laundry and and sort of sit around and play happy families and talk we could never say anything about anything it was just we just did it to appease them i suppose they had nothing they can't they didn't want to have normal conversations they thought sitting around and talking about nothing was just like off post that's off right. post they've got to get back on post. they just want to back I wonder post. if they were also well, in DC at that time. I'm I'm wondering if they were. Oh, they might have been away. They may have. Been. They were running like the LRH DC house okay. for a minute there, and um. So by 2007, the basics had come out. That was kind of the last straw for you, Trish. Liz, were you already out by 2007? I was a public. The thing is, right? So I was um. I had a lot of Scientology friends. I was a public, but I really wasn't on course. But I would go to the events and, you know, but and maybe they'd try to reg me to do stuff. But I just I was back. I was traveling a lot. I was back and forth. I had my career and I was, you know, the, I was off their radar a bit. Yeah. I, I guess what I'm asking is if the both of you were less involved by that point, how was the relationship with your parents changing at that point? Um, well, okay. Can I just go back to another little incident that these all kind of clump together around my, like, that's it with this place, um, this church, um, oh, the daycare. I, I got a call from my mom who was in DC and it was all around this time. And she was said she was in the hospital and she didn't know where oh. Jim was. And she was, she said, can you please, please go find your father? And she'd had a stroke and she was in DC and he was in somewhere. He, she didn't know. Cause like when you're in the Sea Org and you want to leave, you cannot talk to your partner about wanting to leave because that's a suppressive act. Anyway, I didn't know this. So I'm like calling everybody, the numbers that I have and finally I got a hold of somebody at the life exhibition and mm. I said I need to see my dad where is he and I ended up driving over there and like I'm waiting here until you produce my father right now 
And then he came in and he just looked awful, like gaunt and just ragged. And I was like, mom's had a stroke. Come on. I bought you a ticket. We're going to the DC and we're going to get her to the, you know, go see her in the hospital. Cause mom was like, you know, that's what I want. I need him here. And, um, turns out he was on the decks. He was trying to route out and he was in big trouble. And I said, who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Get in the car. Let's go. And he almost <laughs> got in the car. He was this close. And then he just freaked out about being declared. Mm. And so I went and I went and I walked in the hospital room. I'll never forget this, Tony. She walked past me to see if he was behind me. And when he wasn't, it was just, she was devastated. And that kind of riled me up. And I was like, who does this? These people, these people? have been in yeah. the Sea Org for 30 I years. Mm. I was so pissed. Am I allowed to say that? I yeah. was really angry. And I wrote a letter to David Miscavige. And I was like, how dare you? Like, I don't give, I don't care what's happening. And I FedExed it, cost me like 50 bucks so that I could have a receipt that somebody got it. And the next day I get a call from my dad. He's like, I'm on a plane. Huh? And I was like, awesome. <laughs> but why wasn't you on a board? Why weren't you on the plane with me that day? You know, by Dave this time funny. she's out of the hospital and, you know, um, you know, anyway. Uh, uh, so anyway, it's, all, it's like a, thr I know, it's like a thriller I, novel. This is like a movie. It's just... <laughs> So there's that more, was all, Tony. This, there's this, more. This, but, this is so many. I know, I know. Things. But that's sort of around that time. So our relationship mm. with them was not. This, this, it was, it was yeah, irrelevant. I, yeah. And yeah, then was, yeah. when I got declared, it was because um, I heard Lee was out. And I was like, Lee is out? I'm calling her. And um we reconnected. I think Leah went, got out in 2010. July, July 2013 is when it was official. That's when I right. broke the news. <clears throat> okay. And I called her and that's basically when people knew that I had called her was why I got declared. Or I don't actually know why I got I declared. Can tell you, I can tell you a few things that I remember is that um, Trish was friends with certain people on Facebook. Oh, right, you know, right, right, right. Some, the Facebook uh, Chantel, yeah, the Facebook was what triggered a lot of it because I can remember dad calling me to say, you just need to get her to just not be friends with those people on Facebook. She can be friends with them. I just don't want it to be visual, vi uh, visible. And I remember saying to Trish, just do it. Just like take them off. Just make our life easier, blah, blah, blah. She never does that. So, um, <laughs> so. <laughs> It's um, like they're my friends so what you know yeah wow. and Trish Trish I remember she said to me no this is my integrity I remember the word my, I'm not violating my this is my integrity and I will not and I and I think it was not long after that where it was like that's yeah. it they're gonna, she's done you know and that's kind of really and to, to my dad's credit apparently he fought he went in with binders and binders and he fought like yeah. my daughter shouldn't be declared. She thought it, this she's is an injustice. She's not an SP. Mm -hmm. um, um, and he fought for years and years and it never got anywhere because it, I had to be the one to go in and do the A to E or A to J, whatever it's mm -hmm. called. And um, I was, Liz was like, just, you know, just do it. And I'm like, no, I, there's no way. <laughs> I am going to do those steps just to. No, I'm always, I'm always struck by some <laughs> of the people that are fresh out. They're, they're so fresh out. They haven't figured things out. And they'll talk to me about how outraged and they'll say, Tony, they did this and it's against their law, their rules. And I'm like, you really haven't figured it out yet. Have <laughs> no, you? It's no. like, you know, they're so outraged that the policy has not been followed. I know I'm supposed to get a copy of it and I'm supposed yeah. to be a comma. And it's like, no, they just, psh, you're out. Yeah. But you know, that's, when I realized it's a cult actually, because that's how they keep people in. So you're not allowed to talk about, I mean, Leah talks about it too. And it's like, you can't even talk about your, your, you know, Oh, you, how was your session in OT3? You can't talk to your partner about 
questions you're having that may not favor Scientology or that you're trying to think for yourself. Like, what's mm. this? What's that? You get put because, in ethics. Yeah, because you're being daubed on, or um, that's an Australian word. Um, you're being reported, acknowledged. You're being reported. Re right, right. Yeah. You're being reported. Yeah. And so yeah. this the circle is just like, you know, you can can never get out. So well, then um, in uh, then in 2015 is or 2016 is when we did the daycare from hell story. And Leah really wanted to see that story get done, and some other people did. And I don't know if I told you this, maybe I did, but after you helped me out with that story and I got it out, we got as much out as we could. And I, I think I probably explained to you part of the hard part for me on a story like that and why you're not going to see it in like the LA Times and stuff is, is the fact that you know, you don't have the other parents corroborating or you don't have the you know police report. But I had enough. You would help me get enough documents and stuff that I felt comfortable doing that story. And I knew it was true. And you know who called me the day that story came out to thank me for doing that story was Lisa Marie Presley. I know. Oh, so. Wow. You no, know, really? I know. Yeah. Did you, now, fact, did you know her? Is that why she was so interested in this uh, story? No, Liz I, knew her. I knew Liz grew her. up with her. More. Um, Trish. She, she heard it. Lisa was more okay, in my, go. Yeah, go. Lisa okay. was more in my clique of the Scientology celebrities hanging out at Celebrity Center. And so I knew Lisa. But um, yeah, I'm really surprised that she, I, yeah, that's well, great. Well, I got to tell you that what I heard was she'd heard that story and went to flag and asked them about it. And they were like, who, you know, this is all lies. This is all BS. And, and then she called me and she was like, we need to get this guy, like just really got under her skin. And I was like, a very family oriented person. And I know I yes. it really bothered and, her. And uh, she actually even um, had her lawyer call me. She paid oh, for it out of her own yeah. pocket. And he was like, you know, it's really hard. It's statue of limitations and da, 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 da. But yeah, it really affected Lisa. She really, really do didn't like that. Mm. And that she was also being lied to about it, I think. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's so sad about Lisa. She, yeah. worked, she was a real sweetheart. And I think oh, yeah. that. I mean, that's I, part of why I, mean, I, I did that story about our conversations. I wanted people to know how cool she was. She was great. She was so, so fun to was, talk to on the I phone. I know. I know. So I know. smart. Oh, so let's talk about these more those these last few years now. You you know that we did that story. Um, Leah's went on to do Scientology in the aftermath, but the two of you have really been going through a tough period with your parents. Help oh, me understand cool. what that's all about. All right, I will chime in. So they obviously, you know, got to a certain age where they couldn't really stay in the Sea Org. And I think that whether they, 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 they routed out, you know, they didn't blow or anything. They routed out. But the thing they have to realise is they have no friends, no, they couldn't, like, stay living in L.A. No community, you know. No, you're good. Um, but um, they, they, it's not like they could retire and live in LA. Um, so I'm not sure if I've frozen, but um, they, could, right. so they had, they went back to Melbourne, which is our original, you know, which is our original home. And then uh, had nothing, 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 nothing. Cause they'd been paid $50 a week for 40 years or whatever. So they come back to Melbourne. Uh, I was still. There she goes. <laughs> She'll be back uh, in a second. Um, okay. And where were you at that time, Trish? I was here. I was. Um, I'm here. I had I'm here again. Up. Hi, where's your video? Oh. I was up in Northern California at that time, living up there. Yeah, I'll just try and go back just a little bit. So I was um, in LA. They went back to Melbourne. Right. Our lives were very separate at that time. They were just trying to, they were in survival mode in Melbourne. And then they got some help from Kate, who in Melbourne. So they have more of a community in Melbourne of family, um, cousins on the other side. Anyway, so 
we were, we just sort of were like have a good life we kind of were living at Trish and I by now we're just living our own lives we're grown-up women we've just figured out what our lives are without them we don't really need them and it sounds mean we just I didn't feel connection to them so when they wanted to play happy families and just be, well, now we're just going to have lunches and coffee and meet up. And so, you know, they, but then there was always this sense of handling Trish, right? Mm. Because Trish was declared they couldn't talk to her, but they would talk to me, right? So I was like the, in the middle trying to sort of, and then they always it would shift to dad wanting to figure out how he could get Trish to go do the steps so that she wasn't declared and then he could talk to her again. So it's been a grueling four years of a constant uncomfortable interaction and just trying to figure uh, out where we sit. Just for our viewers that aren't clear on this, what they're talking about is that once you're expelled from Scientology and it's called declared a suppressive person, you're basically declared an enemy of the church and nobody in Scientology can have anything to do with you. But you have one terminal, they call it, a terminal for a person. And that's the International Justice Chief. He's a man in Los Angeles. His name is Mike Ellis. If you write to Mike Ellis and agree to go through a uh, basically an amends project where you're doing these following these steps to get yourself back in the good graces. And while you're doing that, you can only talk to Mike Ellis. If you go through that and basically uh, you're basically uh, uh, um, bowing down to the church of Scientology is what you're doing. Then they will consider bringing you back in. But as Trish, you were telling me, you, you how can you do no, that Tony, after you 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 know you don't want to have anything to do with this organization anymore right tony um no. at, at one point my dad i really really wanted to make it work for my dad and i ended up writing a letter to mike ellis and i said in the letter i'm not going to do the steps but i want to be able to see my family my mother's 83 or and my father's 70 whatever and I don't think it's right that I shouldn't be able to speak to them and I priority mailed it or whatever so that I knew that it was received which it was and I never heard peep nothing because the only one I hear that you're going to do the a to e and make you know bend to their rules and come back and do your liability formula and disconnect from all the nasty little SPs in blah, 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 you know. Basically. But your dad wanted to try something. And so you told him, well, first you have to watch all the episodes of Scientology in the aftermath. And he agreed. Did the, Were the two of you surprised that he agreed to that? Oh, floored. Weren't you, Liz? That he watched them all? The... I don't think so, but I don't think he watched them properly. I think he just cannot see things other than and their stories aren't true. They can't be true. I think he just really literally. So so in other words, he hate watched it, right? (laughs) Doesn't want to see it. Actually, there were some things that he was like, I know that that happened. I know that. You know, regging they over regge, and I know that they building. He said he's not Hubbard. Oh, and- Trisha's just what? Yeah. Oh, I think we're frozen. I might have to dip out so you guys can finish it. Otherwise, I think my um, video is causing the interaction. So I might just stop my video for now. Okay. There we go. Okay uh so um so yeah so he watched them all and then i he said let's discuss them every day after i finish an episode and we did and i thought i thought (gasps) maybe you know because unfortunately tony what i've come to realize is that you know even though he was like i don't care that you're not a scientologist uh we don't care whatever Mm. religion you want to be you just can't be declared right and then we can be a family again so it's just all on me to do that thing and um and what was my point uh um you said well i mean i think what you're trying to say is that they i'm this 
this is what really ended it for me and dad. You know, it's like, I can't talk to you anymore. I said, you really would, you say you don't mind that we're not Scientologists, but I don't believe you. That's it. I said, I don't, I don't believe you. Right. It was very clear. I said, I don't believe that actually. I'm really sorry. I just, I don't feel it and I don't believe it. And I go, you would prefer if we were Scientologists, wouldn't you? And he goes, well, of course I would. Of course I would. And I went, well, there we go. That's it now. Because every time I see you, I know you're sitting there thinking, I really, they need, they should be, they need to be. I wish they were because I'm better than them. Poor them. I'm telling you that's the flow. Yeah, basically. And also like when I was ha- like, I really wanted to have these heart to hearts with my dad. I mean, you know, with I love my parents um, to a point, but uh, you, mm-hmm. I could see when I would originate things to him of like the, the daycare, the books, the, all my considerations, the fact that I'd finally realized that the whole thing is just a scam and trying to explain that. I could see him trying to find the the Scientology policy to handle me. You know what I mean, Tony? Yeah. yeah. And mm, it was yeah. driving me that's mental. What and I was like, I, I was like, Dad, yeah. just what do you think? Hubbard. I know what Hubbard thinks, right? Because I've done it too. But what do you say? And it was just, it's sad. It's actually tragic. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then, it is sad, Tony. Uh, I think we've we feel very sad for them actually yeah, yeah. because they're the ones missing out on amazing quality family members like us and my, they're just missing my out. daughter um, well that's what i want to ask you, that's what i want to know ask you next is what kind of a relationship has your daughter had with your parents zero oh nothing nothing, nothing. she's 23 no years interest old in her. yeah well they have no you know and then um, he watched all the episodes as you asked him and oh. then still asked you to do your ADE. Yeah, just, yep. I mean, last, that before Liz and I wrote that letter, Liz was talking to him and anyway, we won't go into why and all that, but he just kept saying, oh, well, you know, it's all on Trish, has nothing to do with me. I think I sent you the text. <laughs> it was just like bananas. Yeah, and it's like, um, like, not there. And he said, all sorts of cra- crazy things. Yeah, and I think that... Uh, oh, and the SPs since, and Turn Trish and the evil. They've gotten, yeah. yeah, they've gotten to her. And it has nothing to do with any of that. It's and like, I, don't, also, like I can't have my own thoughts either because right. apparently these SPs mm-hmm. are really strong and powerful. And, and I have to ask you about but this I, little thing because it triggered something for you guys. And that was in, in May, Tom Cruise was beginning to premiere... The latest Mission Impossible movie, and he set up special early premieres in various cities like Rome and Sydney. Mm-hmm. And so he came out to Sydney, Australia, to premiere his film. And then on Instagram, Kate Sebrano posted a picture mm-hmm. of him and her arm in arm, and her talking about how much it meant to her to see him at the premiere. And I remember it was significant because you know the tabloids are always trying to write this story about Tom's leaving Scientology. They're obsessed with this story. And here's pretty good evidence. I mean, he goes no. to Sydney and who's no he way. hanging out with? Australia's most famous Scientologist. No. So, uh, no. But, then, but then when I, I, we brought I, that up, very tight. Very and you mentioned it, it triggered a little something for you guys because you were saying that that, that, that was significant for you because it, it, that your parents... That that affects them. That that Kate's relationship with Tom oh, yeah. Cruise oh, is actually important to your parents. Are you kidding? It's more important than we are. But number one, number one, number one. It is they they would forsake us, and they have, yeah. and they will forsake us for the Tom Cruise Kate Sivarano factor. Absolutely, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Incredible. I mean, they have not that they would. They do, and they have for yeah, yeah. all our lives. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. The, they'll, yeah, Tom's not leaving. Neither is Kate. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. 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 And that's fine. We're not trying to no. get them to leave. We're we right. just want to live our life. And just the thing is that I think Trish and I, since 
I, well, since I decided to take a very clear line and not be in the middle of trying to see if my sister and dad could, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. And uh, I, was, I, but I decided to choose my sister and I feel so much happier and I think Trish feels happier and, you know, I, I just feel different. I feel different. You know, when it's and not I the think first time I've heard this story, I, you it. know, I don't know, like well, 10 years ago, or I don't know if it was 10 years. Yeah, it was, no, it was about seven years ago. I wrote about Liz Gale, that, that Liz was going through a very similar thing that, you know, she's trying to raise kids and her mother's making these insane demands for Scientology and she just can't take it anymore. And finally just said, I'm sorry, mom, you can't be in my life anymore. And mm -hmm. it's kind of the reverse disconnection thing. It's hmm. like, you know, the Scientology is, is just wrecking things. And uh, and mm. she felt a lot more relief when she decided to do that too. Oh, it's yeah. It's I actually, I miracle, felt I felt I, I actually yeah. felt quite. I mean, I've always been pretty well evolved and, um, you know, switched but on. I felt, so I felt an incredible awakening and this huge relief. I didn't realize it was so heavy on me, and then, uh, and I just felt like it. I said to Trish, actually, jokingly, I was like, imagine if all the people who have left Scientology and who have real clarity and confidence about leaving, like they're not torn anymore and they're really crystal clear, started a religion. Let's start our own religion. <laughs> we actually would do so much good because we're so we're actually really evolved humans from having gone through this experience so i just thought that's what we should do and i feel like i could help anyone on the planet right now with you know I, I... well trish i have to ask you about something else too because we talked about it in a in a phone conversation but i didn't put it in the story i, I just sort of forgot about it yeah um now kate has been affected by this stuff that you and your parents have been going through. And at one point you said Kate was quizzing your dad about it or something. Cause she was, she believed it was affecting her health or something. Yeah. My dad told me that um, because, you know, my dad was seeing me under the radar, right? Cause I'm an SP. He's not allowed to see me. So it's all very um, CIA, you know, stealth mm, and um yeah. And um, I said, what sparked you to finally reach out? Like he actually flew to the States, like unbeknownst to me, it was quite um, a thing, wasn't it, Liz? Anyway, yeah. um, he yeah. just showed up and he was like, well, if you want to meet me at the coffee shop, that's where I'll be at 10 o'clock. Cause I was like, you're not going to know where I live. Anyway, he told me that um, Kate had come to see him and mom and they were having a coffee and Kate had um fallen down or something and hurt herself and she thought i wonder if it's trish that you know because this trish thing is a problem she's an sp and you know and maybe we need to handle her finally so that you know i'm not pts and i was like how could i i can't cause kate to fall down i'm not almighty like how <laughs> That's and that's the I, another I, thing about Scientology is that if if something's going wrong in your life, if you're ill, you're trained to look for the the SP, the evil person that's right. affecting you because they want to bring down Scientology, and that's causing your cold, that's causing your, yes. you know, whatever it is that's made you sick, or in Kate's case, apparently made her fall down. But I, I mean, have I, some commentary. I have a reverse commentary on that because they also say if you get uh, molested or date raped, it, you have to take responsibility for that. They don't yeah. say, oh, you must have a suppressive person around you who caused for you to be, you know, right. whatever. Like, and so what over did you commit to pull that in? Yeah. But and then you, that... so there's a very unusual reverse psychology on the something goes wrong. It depends. You use whatever you want to use at the time that suits the situation or, or the celebrity or the what. It's just it's, insanity. It's to be insanity. honest. The more you go into it, it's just 
Yeah. Uh, and the more you're in something, the more you uh, can't see it. And I think the more you walk away and you go back, it's like, you're not so in focus anymore, like, like you were. And so you yeah. actually see things clear when you step away. It's actually mm. amazing how clear it can be, you know, the further away you get it's, um, when and uh, when you're, when you you're in the you're, muck, you just you think can't... your parents think they're still saving the planet. No, I think they're a bit too old and sick now, which is sad because, you know, I always thought, you know, your your kids are supposed to take care of you when you're old and sick. But I guess Kate will take care of them. I don't know who's going to take care of them. It's sad. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, Liz, the latest... Uh census numbers from australia have scientologists falling under 2000 now in a country of 30 million people really so um do you, i mean do your yep i believe that well i'll mm -hmm. tell you a funny story i i i i was talking uh-oh uh-oh <laughs> Just randomly walking my dog. We're, we're only getting this story in bits and pieces, Liz. I know. I'm sorry. Um, well, uh, yeah. well, that's not surprising. Talking I mean, and she, oh. uh, yeah, that's. Let me see if I can. Mute her for right now until. Anyway, um, no, I remember when we were kids, Scientology was banned in, in Australia and we would be going to somebody's house where it was all very, you know, secretive, where our parents were learning actually to use that meter right behind you and like study things. And, <laughs> and it was like, you know, all very illegal, um, you know, and I'm running around as a little kid in, in that. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Australians are a bit more um, switched on, I think, when it comes to. Well, uh, I mean, I'm sure the numbers are. <laughs> I'm sure the the per capita numbers are just as low in the United States. I mean, it's a tiny organization, and and um, I mean, that's one of the things that strikes me is your parents seem to have this attitude that Scientology is, you know, really the the, ki the killer thing. And it's so disappointing that you're part of this tiny minority of people that don't get it. And it's just, it's the complete opposite, that there's almost no Scientologists in the world. Tony, you know, it's also incredible that, um, you know, I think that, you know, Hubbard's own thing, it's like, there's no such thing as children. You're an old Thetan and you don't, you've had, they're not really your parents. It's just, you know, all this stuff, which disassociates you right away mm. from mm. wanting to raise a child and take care of them. Like, because you're not really a child, you're an old Thetan. Oh, you don't know how to use that hacksaw, but you've done it before. So go ahead, you know, pick it up and use it. You know what I mean? So you're yeah. already like, it's, so it's not that surprising. <laughs> Have you guys received a response to your letter? Mm -mm. Oh no. Mm -mm. No, I I do know that so I I have we have mutual family here where I live and my dad I'm just going to say it um he called her uh, and said um wanted to play happy families with her right she's not a scientologist never been but part of our mutual family on my dad's side and she said, I feel a bit uncomfortable, you know, because uh, I know about the the letter and all of that. And he said, oh, they've just been gotten that by really bad people. This was like two days ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's I haven't had a chance to tell. Yeah. yeah. That's, he said that to her and wow. she she's very supportive and she just sort of said, okay. And then he said, well, hopefully one day we'll be able to fix it, oh. which means they'll eventually get us back in the fold. It's not, it's, there is no impact. I swear to God, they would be thinking, poor Trish and Liz, they've really been gotten now. Like, yeah. 
by the this evil is, SPs. You know, like the fact that they wouldn't they wouldn't be thinking anything other than that. That that it just shows how good they are and how Scientology is booming because there's all these people talk, coming up and talking about it, and it's like they're coming to get us. See, oh yeah, that's be- right. That's, that's right. I forgot think. about that. Every time yep. Scientology is attacked, it's because they're expanding. Yep. Isn't that what yep. LRH says? Yep. The, they'll come up from the dark. They're, they're winning. Yeah. See, we're yeah, winning. Yeah. That's why yeah. there's so many SPs. It's, I swear this <laughs> is the narrative. And it's we didn't make that up. No. And that's... Tony, I'm sure you would talk to many people. And we're talking to people out there who are probably all sitting watching this and going, <laughs> oh, they're saying exactly what I think and what I, you know, it's just, there's no one has gotten to us mm-hmm. to make us think this way. Especially when everybody has the same Same thing. words, the same story. <laughs> yeah. Same story about oh the, cadet, the cadet orb and having to yeah. live in a dorm and having to run around in blue and, oh, it's just yes. like, it's not yeah. make that I just up. wish somebody could ask Kate Severano why why your cousins are going through this and did you really ask whether trish was the cause of you falling and hurting yourself and but you know Mm. it's just not something that she would ever tolerate being asked i'm sure she would have a way to gloss over it and i I think that kate even tried in the beginning kate and sheree they did did very hard to get me declared and Mm. because i had talked to mike and leah that that's the the you know the dynamic duo of evil (laughs) that they they just couldn't he was like no well you touched the third rail there trish (laughs) and that's no coming back from that (laughs) i know (laughs) Um, but you know like like Liz said like Kate and like we were so close we were very yeah like really and I love a great family it was fantastic I love I love how it's I love how we I love how we used to be I know Um, I know I think that uh yeah no Kate I don't know I I wonder if she actually She's no. a very good person, and she. I remember talking to her at different times, and her mom Cherie, our mom's sister. She. They were rallying to help get Trish undeclared. They actually said, "We don't believe Trish is a suppressive person." You know, they. They. Those words have come out of their mouth to me. Same with our parents saying that. So they all have tried, but at the end of the day. Trish just still needs to go and do call it. the interna- the international justice right. chief, which doesn't make so any that- sense. When you leave the church, why would you want to abide by the church rules? Well, that's it's, the thing is, you know, it's logical. It's, I learned pretty early on that routing out is basically a way of routing someone back in. You know, I mean, oh yeah, they oh, make absolutely. they make it so that you just uh, give up. Yeah, mm. exactly. So, so but... Tony, let me ask you a question. I'm curious. It's probably written it or said it somewhere. But what what wigged for you to make you want to look into Scientology? Like I don't know. I mean, I, I grew up in LA, so when you grow up in LA, you sort of hear yeah. about it. And uh, mm-hmm. I've always been sort of intrigued by crazy beliefs and stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. at some point, I learned something about it, and then I just I knew I had, I, I knew a little bit. I, I remember in 1995, Kurt Loder doing a really cool thing on MTV about it. And that happened to be the year oh, interesting. That, I, that happened to be the year I started as a reporter at this newspaper in Phoenix. And then I just fell into this story by accident uh, involving this mm. uh, cult deprogrammer named, deprogrammer named Rick Ross, who's very, very well known mm. today. But back then I, I got to write like the first full profile of him. It was my first cover story. And mm. uh, it just intrigued the hell out of me. And it led me into all these other directions. And uh, I started hearing from, you know, uh, Jerry Armstrong up in Canada was sending me documents and Ida Camburn was calling mm-hmm. me from San Bernardino County and Paulette Cooper was sending me emails from Florida. And I realized there was this whole field 
And I was very intrigued. It was the very early days of the internet. And there was a lot of stuff about it online. But there was this war going on online about information that could be on and people being sued and their houses being raided. And um, I just was intrigued by all the mysteries. Like there was a lot of unanswered questions about things. And so mm-hmm. I would go do other stories, business stories and educational stories. But I'd always come back because I just had met somebody new. I met Tori. Then I met Graham Barry. And then, you know, I just won. And I was fortunate I worked for a news organization that allowed reporters to kind of develop areas of expertise. So over the years, I just kept gathering sources and writing stories. And then at some point, when I was uh, editor at the Village Voice in 2011, I'd been there for a few years. That's when the Marty Rathbun thing happened in South Florida, where they Mm -hmm. were literally besieging his house. Mm -hmm. And it was so perfect for the internet it was so perfect for the website and part of my job was to help turn this venerated wonderful print newspaper into more of an online enterprise <gasps> and i just felt mm-hmm. like well the editor-in-chief should be doing that as well and here i had, I had stumbled upon this great national story that nobody was really paying attention to and i just started writing about it every day and then i realized you know what that's what's missing because there were great reporters who did great stories about Scientology, but then it would just like kind of die down after a while. People would forget. But the Daily Beat mm-hmm. reporter really develops great sources and an expertise and a track record. And I realized, you know what? Somebody should be doing that about Scientology. And I think it's fun. So that's the job I gave myself in April 2011 was I'm just going to find something about Scientology to write about every day. For a bunch of people who know more about it than I do, but I'm going to bring them something every day they haven't heard. And that's that's the tough yeah. challenge is, mm-hmm. can I bring you something every morning where you're like, oh, I haven't seen that before. I haven't heard about that. And that's a lot of fun for me. It's a great challenge. And I get to meet a lot of really yeah. wonderful people like you. So that's what's just kept me going. And then I did get to solve some of these mysteries. Like, you know, the very first clear was that woman that Hubbard pulled onto stage in uh, LA in 1950. I found out finally who that was and talked to her son and, and got to wow. solve that mystery. Mike Meisner was the guy who uh, uh, was arrested during Snow White and turned evidence for the FBI causing the big raid. What happened to him? I found him. You know, stuff like that. Wow. It just mm. I really t- intrigues me. And I like, you know, when there's a lot of stuff online that maybe is this is true or that is true, try to solve that, you know, and, and get an answer about that. So one of the things that really intrigued me about Paulette Cooper, for example, was that a lot of information about her was a mess online. I mean, Wikipedia, when I first started talking to her, Wikipedia literally said she was born at Auschwitz. Wow. I mean, it's completely untrue. And, her story I, is amazing. But, I, but, but I got the, the real story was more interesting. So that's that's the kind of thing I'm just, you know, I just find that it's a fascinating subject. I got a front row seat. I know a lot of times Scientologists don't understand why somebody who was never in uh, is so interested, yeah. but I, I really, it's crazy. I know, but I actually enjoy reading Hubbard's early lectures and yeah, I piece, think I love and that you're things so- together, you know, mm-hmm. trying to figure out I, how I, this thing got where it is. Our you grandmother, um, just real quick, because you, she, I had a clear brace that she was clear number 1265. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, the other thing, Tony, is you speak very, Mm -hmm. you know how, like you speak very clearly and Mm -hmm. succinct and you're not over emotive or, you know, like, you know, some journalists, I don't know, but you should, I saw your interview on, I guess it was on, I saw it on YouTube with CNN with um, Jake Tapper. Jake? Not with Jake Tapper, uh, with. Um, oh, oh, hold on. Yes. Yeah, Frederica no, um, Whitfield. I was with her, her recently, um, uh, but not with Jake Tapper. But anyway, did you see me with Tara Brown on 60 Minutes Australia? Of course. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah. It was fun. Mm-hmm. No, I thought mm-hmm. that was great. What's what's next for mm. that? Because we need more 
I, I know a lot of people who watched that here. Yeah. And well, I'm always in touch with them and they let me know when they want to do something. Um, lately, I've been writing for Daily Beast and Rolling Stone. And mm. I am working on some pieces uh, for them down the road that I think are going to be pretty important. So it's just, uh, you know, I got to feed my website every day, but I'm trying to get some other things going as well. And, and you know, it's it's uh, it, it reached kind of a fever pitch recently because of the sentencing of Danny Masterson. But now things have calmed down a little bit again. But there's a lot of interesting litigation now that Leah is suing Scientology yeah. uh, as well as Danny Masterson's victims. So uh, I, I'm busy checking those dockets and everything because people want to know every little thing. That's why I'm very fortunate. I have an audience that cannot get enough of this stuff. And that's uh, that makes it, uh, you know, doable for me is that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, not every day is a huge story. There are some days it's a little story, but the audience cares. They want to know the fun mm -hmm. stuff as well as the sad stuff and the terrible stuff. And I think that's part of what has made it um, viable also is that it's a it's a mix. It's not the same, you know, I think if you're angry all the time, it's going to no, get that, old. That's, that's exactly true. And I think that sometimes when I'm, when Trish and I are like battling out how we feel about it, I say in a lot of ways, we're fortunate in some ways because we wouldn't be who we are now. Mm -hmm. And we did have some magical experiences of being part of that, community there were good things absolutely in the 80s and the good days and great events and you go and it's like the camaraderie and and especially for me you know I did get to hang out with at the celebrity center was my place um and you, I met some great people and you know there's there's so many good people it's just that the overall is hierarchy is too punitive and well, I mean, also, I'm looking at you guys. I mean, now you're you've got your life together. You're doing great. You've got this wonderful daughter, Trish, and and you know your parents are missing out. I'm sorry. Oh That's, yeah, I, I know. I think they really are. They really are not. And even when I've tried to have family barbecues with them of our extended family here, who are not Scientologists, they literally look Miserable. traumatized. Mm at the fact that we're all just sitting around talking about this and that. that is nothing know, nothing <laughs> like yeah. just watching kids in the pool they're just not into the minor things it's yeah. really um it's really sad, sad. and we feel because we grew up thinking you know you don't want to be like a normal they call it a wog you know that term does anyone yeah uh. so it's like average person you don't want to be like that so and sitting around talking about I don't know where we're going to go on holiday or what you do last week or uh, that's not productive enough you know it has to be a productive conversation about something profound uh but yeah look it's affected us in our relationships and I've had friendships I've had a boyfriend who broke up with me because in conversation I said because I was living in Melbourne at the time and in conversation, I mentioned that Kate Soberano was my cousin. And he looked at me, a bit of a delayed reaction, and he goes, she's a Scientologist, isn't she? And I went, oh, yeah, I'm not really, though, you know. Uh, and he said, oh, I can't be with anyone who's connected to that church because my mum's brother got into Scientology because he was told they could fix his cancer, and he died. And so... And I was heartbroken, you know. So I got affected by the ripple of impact of being in that, yeah. I was in my 30s, but yeah, so. Well, it's definitely you're, both, a you're both very brave to come out now and, and talk about things. And I think uh, it's an interesting Honestly, time. Honestly, Tony, um, it's a privilege to talk to you. And I just want to thank you. But also, believe it or not, um, might be brave but it's also part of our journey of healing and moving on to be honest yeah you're because helping us you are because we it's not this is always going to be a part of us but how you move forward in the world without it constantly you know ragging on you and this is part of it i just I hope your parents watch this sometime and realize what they're missing I don't think they will. They wouldn't be allowed to. They wouldn't let themselves. 
Yeah. Don't hear about it because yeah, you know, they'll get in trouble. I don't actually that's I don't I'm not hoping or thinking about that. I just hope that there's people out there who are watching and relate to our story and it just gives them more courage to be clear about how they feel. You know, we're not trying to convince anyone of anything. No. One way. It's just we have a story to tell. We There's like probably 10 other chapters we could go through. It's uh, Okay. And I'm actually, well, I just heard I'm about actually, a follow-up, so I'm very happy because I want yeah. some follow-ups. I would love to. And um, yeah. I actually, I'm going to write a book, um, my own memoir about my life because there's all these other things that have happened in my life. I've worked with a lot of celebrities. I've been, my career has been in the entertainment industry as, you know, personal assistant. So, you know, I've got some good stories to tell, which <laughs> I'm like, okay, yes, well, we'll check do. back. Not in. Not science, all of these stories, but yeah. they're good stories. Nonetheless. Yeah. So well, listen, you guys, yeah. thank you both so much for talking. Thanks, Tony. To me, and uh, we'll definitely be checking in with you and yeah. I hope people, you know, understand how tough it's been for you guys, but you're very brave to come out and speak with me. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.